This video is made possible by 28 Mobile. Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Board, with a look at LG's G3, the new flagship for 2014, sporting a 5.5 inch QHD display, which crushes the resolution of a full HD display with 1440 by 2560. That gives us a pixel density of 538. That's one of the most pixel dense displays you can buy right now, which makes this a really compelling device to take a look at. So this also has a 13 megapixel rear facing camera, which does have optical image stabilization with laser autofocus, which we're gonna demonstrate here. We also have a 2.1 megapixel front facing camera, which has some interesting features as well. Now again, this camera does record 4K video. This has a 3000 milliamp hour battery, has a Snapdragon 801 processor clocked at 2.5 gigahertz. Of course, that is a quad core processor and has two or three gigs of RAM and that is dependent on the internal storage you chose. 16 gigs get you two gigs of RAM, 32 gigs get you three gigs of RAM. All right, so let's go ahead and lift the lid and take a look here. So as you can see here, I have the white version. This is also available in a variety of other colors. So you can see you have white trim piece along the front and along the side. If you look along the back, you have this nice white back panel with this really interesting grain to it that actually kind of resembles a ceramic knife. We're gonna take a closer look at that in just a moment. Now, as you can see here, the packaging talks about the knock code for unlocking the device, and I'll show you exactly how that works. We have some literature, which is in Korean. Now, they do have reference to the quick circle case, which I hope to review later, which is kind of a neat accessory for the LG G3. So we have a standard white micro USB 2 cable, no USB 3 here. We have a pair of headsets, Quad Beats 2, which are in-ear headsets, which includes a microphone, uh, inline controllers, all those sort of features, along with replacement ear tips, as you can see here. We also have our wall adapter. This is the Korean wall adapter, which I cannot use. And then we have a power charging cradle. So they do include two batteries in here. So you get two batteries with your Korean phone. This is not common uh, elsewhere in the world, but uh, Korean phones tend to include two batteries. So these are 3000 milliamp hour batteries and uh, they include this little charger and cradle here. So as you can see here, you plug in your power supply, slip in your battery, and you can rest your phone right in that cradle. All right, so let's go ahead and peel off the plastic on the LG G3. We also have plenty of plastic surrounding the bezels. And we also have a little plastic around our buttons on the back here. All right, so let's take a close look at the design of the LG G3. As you can see back here, we have those back keys, which are familiar from the LG G2. These have been redesigned. You can see now that they're not only flush, they're actually recessed this time. They no longer integrate the LED notification light in the power button. That's the power button at the center. We also have our volume keys up and down, and these do have dual purposes, which I'll explore later when we talk about the software. Now on the back, we have our 13 megapixel camera with optical image stabilization and 4K video. We have a dual color LED flash for more accurately lighting the scene with a cool or warmer color depending on what the scene demands. Now we also have our laser autofocusing mechanism which uses an invisible laser to read the distance of subjects. So instead of using a contrast based mechanism in order to focus the subject instead it uses this laser light. So it doesn't need light in order to focus. So in night conditions or dark conditions you're able to focus without a lot of light around. So this is, gives you faster focus and much more accurate focus. Now along the bottom, you can see that we have this floating arc design. This is LG's terminology. So it gives you kind of this curved design. We have a headphone jack, a microphone, as well as a micro USB charging port. Along the side, not much. Along the other side, not much at all, except for a thumbnail port for popping off the back panel. And that's because all the buttons are on the back of the phone. Now along the top, you'll find an IR LED blaster along with a microphone. And a feature unique to the Korean model is a TV antenna. This is a feature very popular in some Asian countries, so you're able to pull out this full antenna to access your local terrestrial television. Now toward the back, you'll find our single loudspeaker. This is a mono speaker, but it's powered by a one watt amp. So it's a little better than average in terms of rear facing loudspeakers. Now let's go ahead and pop off the back panel so we can install our battery. So as you can see here, we have our NFC antenna built into the back panel with our electrical connections up here. On the back, you can see we have our battery compartments. Let me go ahead and slip this in. So up here, we have our combination micro SD card slot and micro SIM slot. And down below, we'll find our loudspeaker. So all I have to do to put this back on is snap it into place. And it feels pretty secure. So on the top of the device, you can see we have our earpiece. Next to that is the ambient light sensor and proximity sensor, as well as our 2.2 megapixel front facing camera with a wide angle lens. We also have our little notification light here. So as you can see here, when I wake it up, it does flash for you. It is multicolored and you can adjust that under settings and I'll show you that. So this is running Android 4.4.2 and this does have the knock on feature. So you can double tap the screen to wake it up. You can also double tap to 
close it or to lock it. And if you're in the device, for example, if you're in a app here, you can double tap the status bar to close it. And if you're on the home screen, you can double tap any blank space to lock it. Now let's take a look at the home screens. You can pinch in and out to see all of them. You can tap on specific ones if you want to select them as your home screen. You can add additional ones. You can trash them as well if you prefer. It takes them out to remove. You can also tap and hold anywhere on the home screen to get to your editor. So we have our apps. So you can drag and drop apps to the home screens. You can drag and drop widgets. And you can set your wallpapers here. So you can see we have gallery, we have live wallpapers and multi-photos. So you can create your own wallpapers by adding additional photos. Now, if you go to apps here, you can drag and drop any one of them just by going up here. And then we can drag and drop this to remove it, or we can go up here to app info. It takes you to this little info page. Now we also have foldering here. So let me go ahead and move this folder to a page where I can work here. So if you tap on this, you can add additional apps by going to this editor. So you can select specific apps from your app drawers. You can tap on them instead of dragging and dropping each app to your uh, folder. You can also resize the folder. So you can see you can resize it to almost fill up the entire home screen. Now if you're in the folder, you can tap to edit the name as well as tap to adjust the color of the background. So for example, if you want white, you can select that or go back to the default like so. Now if you tap and hold on one of these apps, you also get to this little editor. So you can change the icon if you prefer. So you can go with the standard icon or select any one of these other icons or add new icons. Now this also gives me an opportunity to show off LG's design sensibility. So you can see here that all the icons are pretty consistent. They have this kind of drop shadow effect with several light sources uh, with a more toned down color palette. So you can see with these layer uh, icons, they all have that very similar design scheme. You can see this little dining icon here. If you go to the home screen and take a look at some of the other apps here, the contacts app, the phone app, we go to other LG apps like the gallery app, the camera app, they all have this very consistent design and color scheme. So overall the design of the entire user interface is much more toned down, much flatter. And you can also rearrange these items in the dock here. So for example, you can change the positioning of the app drawer. Of course you can't remove it, but you can reposition it and you can add additional apps. So for example, if you want to add the camera app and the YouTube app here, you can see it rearranges. That's the maximum number of apps you can fit into the dock. You can also tap on these little detents here to jump to any one of these home screens. And as you can see here, we have the LG Smart Bulletin Hub. This is where you have things like LG Health and Smart Tips. And you can delete this page or turn it off under Settings, and I'll show you that a bit later. So you can tap and hold the Home button to activate Google Now. Alternatively, you can also swipe up to access three other features, such as Quick Memo, and QVoice, which unfortunately is only in Korean right now, and then of course Google Now. Now Quick Memo is actually a screen grab function. So basically it's an app that grabs the screen of whatever you're working on and allows you to annotate it and take notes. Now we also have our recent apps button. So as you can see here, we have a standard array of recent apps. So you can tap on any one of them to launch them. Or as you can see here, we can pinch in and out to change the viewer. So we can see this in a tiled view or in a list view. We also have dual window mode, which we can activate, and I'll show you that a bit later. You can clear all. And then we have some other third-party apps that appear in this tray. I think this is actually a carrier setting. I actually had to delete a bunch of these apps in order to get rid of them, but I couldn't get rid of all of them. Now, when you're in this recent apps mode, you can tap and hold on any one of these items to remove it from the list or go to app info. You can also swipe on any one of them to close them or tap on them to activate them. Now you can also tap and hold the recent apps button to get to settings. So for example, on the home screen, I have my settings control panel for the home screen. But if I'm in Chrome, this brings up the settings control panel for Chrome. Now if you tap and hold the back button, it gets you to the dual window mode. So the dual window mode allows you to open up two apps at once in a side-by-side -side viewer. So for example, I can open up Chrome and YouTube. So now I can watch a video in one window while browsing the web in another. So as you can see here, when I tap on them, I can resize the specific window here. This tab also kind of moves around when you tap and hold on it. But basically, that's all there is to it. You can also operate the back button inside your window here. Uh, of course, it does have to be highlighted in order for that feature to work. So for example, if I want to go back in the browser, I have to highlight it. If I want to go back in YouTube, I have to highlight it as well. Now in terms of our drop down notification sheet, as you can see up here, we have our quick setting toggles, we have our Q slide apps, we have our brightness controls and volume controls. If you go to our gear setting up here, you can see that we have more volume controls so we can independently control our volume settings as well. And then we have all of our notifications down here with this big red clear button to clear them all. You can also quickly jump to your settings panel up here. And the settings panel actually has several options here. So you can switch to a tab viewer or you can switch to a list view, which is actually what I prefer. Now in terms of these Q-Slide apps, they're LG apps that basically hover over whatever you're doing. So for example, we have an internet browser Q-Slide app. 
So you can see we have a floating window here, which stays floating on top, allows us to do other things in the background. We can change the transparency. We can also resize it. And then we can also maximize it if we prefer. Let's open up something else. So for example, let's open up the calendar app. So there we go, we have our calendar and we can do the same thing. We can resize it and that sort of thing. Now you can only open up two at the same time. So for example, if you want to open up another one like the file manager here, it says you've already reached the maximum here. You can close them out like so and open up another one. Now, if you're in an app that supports Q slides, such as the calculator app here, you can also activate the feature just by tapping that icon up here or resuming full screen like so. Now taking a look at our quick settings toggles, you can see there's a lot to pick from. And if you wanna access any one of these control panels, just tap and hold on them, it takes you right to the control panel. Now you can toggle on things like sound and vibrate and go to silent. Uh, you can also toggle off Bluetooth, rotation lock, data roaming, turn off your location, you can enable hotspotting, you can enable syncing, you can turn off NFC. You can also enable or disable Q-Slide app, so that panel will disappear if you disable it. You also have your QR remote. This will bring up this little widget here for controlling your AV equipment using the IR blaster. Now we also have Q-Voice, which basically just activates the Q-Voice app, and unfortunately it's only in Korean right now. We also have airplane mode, battery saver mode, Miracast, which allows us to broadcast this display to a Miracast compatible device, like for example, my Samsung Smart TV. You also have quiet mode, which is basically a do not disturb mode here. So you can see that it's muted your notifications and it's telling you right now that you're in quiet mode. You can also tap and hold on that to get you to the quiet mode setting. This allows you to adjust its behavior and set specific times of day you may want this to be activated. So for right now it's on always, but if I wanna select a specific time of day, so for example at nighttime or certain times of the week, I can set that here. I also have my screen timeout settings, which is basically a quick toggle. So for example, I can change it to 15 minutes, 30 seconds, five minutes. Now I also have a shortcut to the Q Memo Plus app, which again allows me to annotate a screen grab. We also have our LED light. So we can turn off our LED notification light or turn it back on. You can also tap on it to take us to that control panel. As you can see here, you can change the LED's behavior. So you can uh, enable it for incoming calls, missed messages, battery charging, as well as downloaded apps. We also have an editor here. So we can change exactly what settings appears here. So for example, you can disable the brightness and volume controls if you prefer. And you could also disable some of these icons or rearrange these icons. Now LG has also included this widget on the home screen. This is called a smart notice widget, but basically what happens is, is it monitors the way you use the phone and the notifications you receive and surfaces them on this widget. So for example, it tells you the date and time, whether you have calendar events, notifications, whether you have missed calls, that sort of thing. All of this appears here in this little drop down channel. Unfortunately, I don't have anything to show you right now. All right, so let's take a look at the app drawer. So as you can see here, we have our apps, we have our widgets, and then we have search, so we can search our apps or widgets, and then we have our settings up here. Now, under settings, we have the option to view apps by alphabetically, download data, or user customize. User customize also includes foldering, as you can see up here. You also have show large icons, so you can increase the size of the icons if you prefer, like so. You also have hide show apps, so we can hide some apps. So some apps we can't uninstall, such as these apps right here. So I've decided to hide them. I can also add some other apps here, which I don't really want to see visible. Click so. And then we can go to edit or uninstall apps. So you can see that the apps that are eligible to be uninstalled have these little X's next to them. And those that cannot be uninstalled have nothing. So you can see certain apps can be uninstalled like the ones I've downloaded, but a lot of the included apps cannot be uninstalled. I can also go to my home screen settings here. Again, this takes me to my home screen settings panel, which I'll show you a bit later. Now, as you can see here, we have foldered items in the app drawer, but I can't create those until I go to editing mode. So if I go to edit, I can now drag and drop folder or uh, items to our folders here. For example, Chrome goes into Google and I can also add additional items to the app or to the folder like so. Now these buttons on the back actually have several functions here. So we have our sleep wake power on button. You can tap and hold that to get to some additional options here. So we can power off, power off and restart, turn on airplane mode, vibrate, etc. But you can also, for example, if we unlock the screen here, if you tap and hold both the power and volume down button, you can take a screen grab. Now, if the phone is locked and you tap and hold the volume down button, it launches the camera app for you. And if you tap and hold the volume up button, it launches the Q Memo app. Now, also on the home screen is our Google Now widget. So all you have to say is, okay, Google, what's the weather like tomorrow in Detroit? Tomorrow's forecast for Detroit is 81 degrees and partly cloudy. 
Now our QMemo app is also a note-taking app. So in addition to using it for screen grabs, you can also use it for just writing quick notes. You can use your pen or you can use the keyboard. And this allows me to show off the keyboard that LG has included, which has some interesting features here. So if you go to landscape orientation, you can actually split the keyboard for a more thumb typable keyboard, very similar to what you might see on tablets. So you can merge it just by swiping it together or pulling it apart. Now under settings, we also have keyboard height and layout. So we can change the bottom row keys. So for example, we have this little editor here which allows us to drag and drop this extra key here, which allows us to select specific symbols. So for example, if we want the at symbol, you could select that, or you can just remove this if you prefer and select another one if you want. So again, just drag it up, select exclamation point or whatever. So you have lots of customization options with your keyboard. Now you can also change what the settings key displays. So you can go with the clip tray, you can go with your settings icon, handwriting or voice input. So there is a handwriting keyboard in here as well. You can also adjust the height of a keyboard. So if we go to keyboard height, we can adjust it here like so. And you can see there is a maximum reach for that height and a minimum reach for that height. So you can see it only goes down so far. We also have keyboard themes, so we can select white or blacks. So if you prefer a black keyboard, you can apply that. You can see it's got that black theme, which I actually kind of like. Now we also have one-handed operation for our keyboard. So if we again go back to our keyboard here, you can see we have a right justified keyboard, or if you're left-handed, you can select the left justified. Now I also have something called quick move. So if you type a sentence and need to make corrections, all I have to do is swipe along the uh, space bar down here and you can see you get this little navigation tool for that sentence. So for example, I wanna mo modify this word. Now it automatically detects what I intended to type here, which was quick, automatically updates it for me. I can also go to most here and change it to move. Again, it sees I intended to type move and corrects it for me. So a really nice utility. Now another major new feature here is available under settings and specifically under our lock screen settings. This is the knock code. So that's available under our security settings. So let's go ahead and select knock code. So I'm just gonna do a very simple one here. Continue. So you can enter three to eight taps the more you have in there, the more secure it is. And then we have to select a passcode here. So now if I go to my lock screen, I can unlock it just by tapping the screen in that pattern. And I actually can do it anywhere on the lock screen. I can do it up here. I can do it down here. And there we go, it works pretty well. Now if you enter in the wrong passcode, you can see you get a red LED. Let me show you that again. So again, it's reading the code and letting you know that it was incorrectly entered. So let's go ahead and select the right one here. There you go. Now, typically I don't really talk about the messaging app, but there's a few interesting things they've done here. So if we go to our settings, you can see that we have conversation theme. So this allows us to adjust the wallpaper of the messaging app. You can also adjust the style of the bubbles here. So you can see there's quite a few really interesting ones. Some are kind of like clouds, some look like animals, some look like cartoons. So you get the idea here. So there's a lot of options here. You can also select a background from either your camera or your existing gallery. So let me go ahead and select one from my photo gallery. So let's just select these irises here. And there we go. So our background is now this image. Now let's take a look at our settings panel and you can see that by default we get this tab viewer, but I prefer a list view, which you can edit up here. So you can switch to the list view, click okay. So now you have a continuous list, which is still broken down by those tabs. So under our call settings panel, you can see there's a lot going on here. We do have HD voice, so if your carrier supports HD voice, so does the phone. We also have our call reject options. So if you select on, uh, you can reject certain calls uh, from a list or reject all calls. Now, you can go to this list here to add numbers to a list. So if you just want to automatically reject those phone numbers, you can. Uh, we also have decline with a message. So for example, if you want to decline a phone call but send them a text message, you get a variety of cam messages, but you can also create new ones if you prefer, and then you can delete them as well. We also have connection vibration, so the phone will vibrate when the other party connects. We have noise suppression, which you can enable. We have record buttons. If you want to record your phone conversation, that's available on this phone. You also have voice enhancement, so this will increase the clarity of the phone call on your end using the noise cancellation microphone. We also have HD voice quality, so you can select the default mode, clean or soft, so it changes the equalization. Now we can also save unknown numbers when we place a phone call. We can also use the power key as the button to end phone calls. 
Now, under Share and Connect, we have things like NFC technology, which we can turn on and off, Smart Share Beam, Media Server, so this allows us to share this device's content with other DLNA certified devices like an AV receiver. We have Miracast, which we can toggle on and off as well for broadcasting our display wirelessly to a supported device like a Samsung Smart TV in my case. And we have LG PC Suite. This allows us to wirelessly connect to our PC using software to modify or to manage content and apps on our device. Now under sound, we have the standard array of options, our volume, our tones, our ringtones, our text tones. But what I really want to show you here is that you do have the option for the phone to read back caller ID information or messages automatically. So you can enable this and it will automatically speak to you. So under display, we have our standard array of settings, brightness, screen timeout, the screen off effect. You can see that the uh, retro TV is the defaulted one, but we also have black hole and fade out. We have font type, which you can change. I actually like the standard font. You can see the font they're using here, new smart gothic. Uh, we also have font size, which we can adjust, smart screen. So this does have a smart stay technology, very similar to Samsung. So basically the camera is watching for the presence of your eyes. So if you're looking at the display, it will prevent the screen from going to sleep. And if not, you'll get a little notification in the status bar up here that lets you know that it's about to turn off. Now we can also adjust our home touch buttons here. So we can adjust the button combination like so. So for example, we have notifications, Q memo plus Q slide and dual window mode. And basically all we have to do is drag them up here and we can also reposition them. And you can see that we have a limited number that we can add. So if we try adding additional ones, they'll bump them out of the way. You can also select the color of the home touch button. So you can see white is actually the default here, but you also have white with gradation. You can see it changes that down here right away. You can also go with black and you can also go with black with gradation. Now we also have the option to hide the home touch buttons in certain apps. So for example, if we're in Chrome here, if we go to Chrome now, you can see it will hide the, the touch panel here. And if you want to activate it, just swipe up to get to it. We also have one-handed operation, which works for the dial keypad, the LG keyboard, and the lock screen keyboard. Under storage, you can see that this one comes with 32 gigs of storage. I have about 21 left. I've already recorded some 4K videos. So you can see I've recorded maybe one gig of videos and photos uh, already. I haven't downloaded many apps, so this is pretty much what comes with the phone. So add another gig to that, and you got about 22 gigs. You also can select your default messages app. So either you have Hangouts or the defaulted messaging app. You also have your apps. So here you can manage your apps. You have your downloaded apps, apps on the SD card, apps that are running in the background. It has to populate that list. You can see how much RAM it's using right now. So out of three gigs, we're up to two gigs of RAM in use. And we also have guest mode, which is very interesting here. So all I have to do is activate this feature and what I've done here is select a specific type of lock screen. So I already set a code up here. So now if I go to my lock screen and use that specific code here, it will actually unlock the device into the guest mode. So very simple here. Now they have very restricted access here. They only have a couple of apps they have access to. They don't have access to your account or anything like that. So they won't see your email notifications or anything like that. They'll just have these apps that they can use. And all of that is highly customizable here. So let's go back to my account there. You can see it takes me right to my account. And again, if you go to guest mode here, you can select specific types of apps that are allowed. So you can see that these are the ones that came defaulted with guest mode. You can also select uh, the wallpaper here. So you can change the wallpaper if you want. Now we also have our shortcut keys, which I talked about earlier. I find this very useful here. And you can disable this if you prefer. Now under battery, you see our settings panel here, which allows us to enable the battery percentage icon in the status bar up here. That's off by default. You can see that at 66%, it's estimating we have about six hours and 56 minutes of life left. Uh, you can also enable battery saver mode, which will activate at 30%. Now, if you tap on it, you get to more settings here. So you can enable the behavior of battery saver mode when it activates. Uh, so for example, you can turn off NFC or enable NFC under battery saver mode. You can also select specific settings here for brightness control so you can see that by default it dials back down to 20% brightness but you can adjust that as well you also have your screen timeout settings all of that is customized here now we also have smart cleaning which will free up space on your device by eliminating temporary files that may not be needed now in terms of our benchmark and you can see that the LG G3 bests all the other top end Android phones right now at least in the single core score there's a little more variation in the multi-core score especially when you have phones that are running eight cores versus four cores all right, so let's take a look at the camera app, which is again using laser autofocus to meter a scene. In fact, as you can see here, when I move it around, it's quickly refocusing and you can see all the points that it's metering here. So you have a nice uh, multi-point metering system here going on. So it completely reads the scene for both focus, depth of field and that sort of thing. Now let's go ahead and take some photographs. So you can see it takes a photograph. You can record video. 
you can pause recording and you can resume it. And you can also take photos while recording video. You can stop that. And of course you can pinch in and out. You can switch between the front facing and rear facing camera. Now when you're in the selfie camera, there's a few interesting options here. So if you enable flash, you can see it actually surrounds the camera or the display with this pink color to light the face. But a really interesting feature here is that if you hold up your hand, make a fist, starts a countdown timer. Takes the photograph. And again, if you enable the flash here, I can show you the difference here. Now, as I said, this is also a 4K camera. You can change the resolution of both the still camera and video camera by going right here. So you can see you have the video camera settings right here. So you have slow motion at 120 frames per second, all the way up to ultra high definition. And you can go from 13 megapixels to 10 megapixels, 9, 3, etc. on the camera side. Now under mode, you have several settings here, including dual mode, which allows you to record with both cameras at the same time. So you can reposition this, you can tap and hold on it to resize it, or you can tap on the uh, thumbnail to switch between the front facing and rear facing camera. You also have this little drop down here for, for example, you can do the split view, side by side viewer, fish eye, star shape, heart shaped, instant, oval blur, stamp, windows, you can see lots of options here. Now we also have panorama and magic focus. So let's talk about that. So when you take a magic focus image, you can see it's actually taking several photos at once. So now if we go to that image here, basically what it has done is taking several photos in focus and out of focus and you can dial back and select the image you want. All right, so let's talk about the strengths and weaknesses of the LG G3. Of course, I think the biggest one is going to be this display. 5.5 inches, which is basically edge to edge, basically fills up the entire front of the device. So although we have this very large display, the overall device dimensions are fairly compact and comparable to similar devices like the GS5 or the HTC One M8. It is a bit wider, but you're also getting that display that is very sharp. 530 pixels per inch, beating the mid 400 pixels per inch of of the other devices like the GS5 and the HTC One M8 and a big jump from the 326 PPI in the very small four inch iPhone 5S. Now with all those pixels, you get really sharp text because it is rendered by the device. Now, not everything appears sharp on here. You can't really take advantage of it. So UI elements like the icons, the wallpapers, that sort of thing are scaled up to the resolution here, but not all elements have this resolution. So if you are browsing on the web, images and graphics and icons and that sort of thing won't necessarily look sharper on this display, but certainly text will and the overall user interface looks really sharp. Now my only real complaint here is brightness. It's not as bright as the HTC One M8 or the iPhone 5S so visibility outdoors is a little reduced. Now the next big feature here seems like a gimmick, but I think it makes a huge impact and that's the laser autofocus. This allows the camera to see the subjects in the scene without the aid of light. So this means in a dark setting, you can get really accurate and sharp focus. Now generally camera quality is pretty good with optical image stabilization, you're able to get sharp video and sharp images in any sort of lighting conditions. Now my only real complaint with the camera is that it tends to flatten the image. So it's a little overexposed. There's not as much contrast as I like to see, but generally color accuracy is pretty good. Now LG has also paid a lot of attention to the design of the user interface. I think it's really paid off here. This is one of the best looking skins I've seen on Android. I definitely prefer stock, but in this case, LG has given us a much more unified theme. A, I think a more appealing font, a nice color palette, and overall just a much more simple and consistent experience that you really don't see on other Android skins. Now, although the LG G3 doesn't have front-facing speakers like the HTC One M8 or the Sony Xperia Z2, it does have a pretty loud rear-facing speaker, which is pretty clear. Now, like most rear-facing speakers, it is prone to positional distortion. So it sounds different depending on how you're holding it, whether you're holding it in your hand and kind of muffling the speaker in your palm or placing it on a table or holding it with two hands in landscape orientation. So it tends to distort a bit under those circumstances. Now, the speaker at maximum volume tends to blow out. So maybe the app is a little too strong for the quality of the speaker they've included. Now the G3 also seems to be prone to overheating. So for example, I was recording some 4K video this weekend and during that recording session, the device actually shut down the camera and told me it was overheating and needed to cool down so it couldn't record my video. Now it wasn't a particularly hot day, it was in the mid 70s, it was sunny outside and most of the time the device was in my pocket. Now more frequently, I noticed that the screen brightness is dialed back to 95%. 
just out of normal use. I'm not doing anything taxing, I'm not gaming, I'm not exporting anything, I'm just using the device. And at some point, it seems to run a little too warm for the system, so it dials back the screen brightness automatically. Now, generally speaking, I actually really like that the keys are on the back of the phone. This means that when you're handling the device, you're not accidentally pressing the keys on the side of the phone. So I actually really like this design. I think for a lot of people, they may have trouble getting used to it, and there's still some tactile issues here. It's kind of hard to feel for what button is which in many cases, so you end up looking at the phone. But I think in time, you definitely get used to it, and you actually prefer it in the end. So in conclusion, with that beautiful display, excellent camera with laser autofocus, which makes a huge difference, and a well-designed user interface, I think the LG G3 is one of my favorite phones out there right now. So that's going to do for me in this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. So the difference here is, <laughs> this dropped it. <laughs>